Welcome to season three of Locker Room for Growers, a show with human centric conversations that include compelling stories, unique professions, and those who set the tone for living with a positive attitude. I'm your host, Debbie Ellickson. Please subscribe to the show and check out our past episodes and clips. Follow me on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Threads, and more. Now let's meet our next guest. Anna Storm represents every young girl who has ever been picked on in school and bullied by her peers. She shows them it is possible to find acceptance, to gain confidence in yourself, and prove to everyone that you can live your best life and slay. Storm learned to develop her confidence through performing in music. Since leaving her hometown, she has never looked back. She's an Emmy award-winning pop star and social media influencer. Two of her songs are on Lizzo's TV series, Watch Out for the Big Girls, and one of those songs is also featured on The Real Housewives, Dubai. Her Versace Shade Unplugged music release features Wes Scanlon from Puddle of Mud, and her new pop single, Crown Tears, is finding heaps of online traction, including countless TikTok duels. Her voice is Britney Spears meets Taylor Momsen meets Amy Winehouse. She recently signed her first music publishing deal. Her popular Instagram account has landed her a spot alongside Vivica A. Fox on her national televised show, Face the Truth. She opened for comedian Red Grant and won a Royal Wolf Film Award as Best Supporting Actress for a role in Anna Nicole, her first feature film. An entertainment brand, social media personality, radio host, and performer, Storm is on a mission to empower others to live their best lives authentically and unapologetically. Owning the hashtag, I slay life. Please welcome Anna Storm. Hi, I love that <laughs> intro, by the way. That that actually brought up stuff that I kind of forgot about. <laughs> so thank you. You're for that. welcome. You're Very welcome. flattering. <laughs> so you went through some dark moments during those school years. Did you have anyone in your corner back then? Back when I was being bullied in elementary, middle, and high school, I didn't really have anyone. The mm -hmm. only person who I sometimes had, I feel like, was my dad, who was always a big supporter of mine and very positive and always my best friend. But, you know, he was working a lot and going on business trips and, and whatnot, so... A lot of the time, I didn't really have any friends, so I just really had myself, and I kind of used to kind of question, like, what's, what's wrong with me? Because that, that's the age where you want to fit in. You want to be accepted by your peers, and I was wondering why I didn't really have any friends. Wow. I mean, it... <sighs> That's really hard to go through if you feel like you're totally alone. It's very tough. And I'm sure you're not the only person who's done it. I imagine going through all that pain, in a way, it's fueled you to write that pain on a page too, right? In some of your songs? Yes, very much so. I feel like without the adversity, I might have not had the fuel to write some of the lyrics. For instance, my first song, Confident, my debut single, that is about my tribulations being bullied and developing into confidence into the powerful female who I am today. So I feel like at the same time that those experiences were devastating, they also helped me as an artist and gave me some material and inspiration. 
Talk about your relationship with your parents. How old were you when they divorced and how did that compound your experiences at school? Yeah. So my parents divorced when I was 18. So not really that long ago, but their marriage was never really that good. And I just remember them fighting a lot growing up and always thinking they're going to have a divorce because I never really got to see what a loving, healthy relationship was without all the yelling and blaming. And that made me feel even more alone because... Mm -hmm. I'm at school and I have all these people picking on me and that's obviously not a safe haven for me. And then I come home and there's all this yelling and there's all this chaos. Sometimes I just would lock myself or oftentimes I would just go into my room, lock myself there, study. I was a really good student, but more because it was just something I knew I needed to do. School always came easy to me. And it was just something to focus on that wasn't all the chaos. But then something that, that really brought me joy was creativity and writing. And I, I wrote my first song when I was 11. And I remember just locking myself in, in my room and just loving the process of writing a song. So that was always kind of the safe space for me when I felt like there was so much chaos around me. What music did you listen to back then? I imagine you had your favorite albums. <laughs> yeah. So I listened to mostly hip hop and pop music. And not a lot of rock because I really just don't feel like I grew up when rock was popular. I listened to a lot of Britney Spears, a lot of Kesha, a lot of Christina Aguilera. Katy Perry, and then for rap, Lil Wayne, Pusha T, Jay-Z, 50 Cent. So does that shield of protection you created when you were in school against those bullies, does that actually help you today keep those trolling brads and chats at bay? <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question, actually, because... You know, I do get quite a bit of trolls more on my TikTok and maybe even on my YouTube shorts than on Instagram, but still some on Instagram, but a lot on TikTok. And when there are trolls, sometimes nowadays, just for my own entertainment and comedic relief, I will actually just fire back at them something kind of clever and I'll do like a video reply to their comment like someone wrote on my clown tears um one of my clown tears posts on TikTok that lyrics akin to a fourth grade school project and so I fired back with oh my god thank you so much I actually wrote clown tears when I was in fourth grade and now I'm in fifth grade like I'll just say stupid shit back I love so that. now I think it's just kind of like for entertainment like when I get people bullying me online I don't take it that seriously I think it's kind of ridiculous and then most of you go to the profile pictures of these people they usually don't have profile pictures so yeah, like they're bots that, mostly. you know they're like bots or they're just like really miserable people that probably aren't that cute um, or have nothing going on. And that's why they feel the need to try to instigate attention online because they can't even have relationships in real life. So, yeah. And, and being the queen of clapbacks is great. I, one of my favorite clapback queens is um, Stormy Daniels. <laughs> she, oh, she's good. Oh, she's good. good at <laughs> She's pretty funny. Eric Ronwell, the lead singer of Skid Row, said in a recent YouTube video that music is spiritual, but the music business is not. <laughs> so is, your thoughts on this? That's, that's a very poignant quote, and it is very true because music in and of itself, it's a beautiful art, right? You're in the studio, you're writing a song, you're recording it, you're putting all your touches on it and then 
once you release it into the world and all the promotion that goes along with it and all the the opinions and and all that that is you know that's a whole different ball game so but that's what you need in order for yeah people to use it. yeah so talk about that perseverance you need to follow through on a music career because it isn't easy like you can post songs on TikTok and and Instagram and whatnot, but to actually perform and formulate a career, although many people started their careers in social media, right? But it isn't an easy grind, and it's it, it feels so like if you don't know what you're doing, uh, there are people who will <laughs> eat you and spit you out. <laughs> It's not an easy grind. It takes a lot of self-discipline. It takes, you know, I, I think a lot of mornings when I wake up, I'm thinking, oh, I need to make content. So usually I try to post on TikTok like at least three times a day I've been doing. And then I'll you have to take those and remove the watermark and post them on TikTok to read, I mean, on Instagram to reels. And there's just all this stuff you have to keep in mind and it, the content grind is can be difficult, you know, and also which what can be hard nowadays is you think like as an artist, you think, oh, am I being too annoying? Like I'm posting this song too many times, but it, as long as you're posting it in a different formats and it's new to some people. Yeah. And you're all people are always discovering new artists and songs and content online so it's really like it is really a grind and it is really a day in and day out and you have to not get discouraged because not and even this happens with like some of the biggest artists like not everything's like a, a home run not everything's like a smash hit even with your content you just have to keep on grinding and putting it out and like yeah. seeing what works for you well, and that's marketing too, right? Yeah. That's your marketing. Yeah, that's marketing. And that's um that's the biggest part of having a music career nowadays is the marketing and the content and and also not always posting about music either. I think yeah. it's a good idea to also let people see your personality. Because yeah, people love music and discovering new music, but they also want to see what makes you different and they want to be able to relate to you and they want to be able to laugh at you or cry with you and feel what you're feeling and, and just let your personality actually shine through. So sometimes it's good to actually just post content that shows you talking or shows you cooking or some interest you might have because people will resonate with that and then they'll like your music as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I don't know. How do you get the attention of somebody like, say, Lizzo <laughs> to listen to your songs? <laughs> well, actually, that happened because I have a good friend who is a popular battle rapper out of New York named Lady Luck. Shout out to Lady Luck. She has a music placement like a sync placement company and so I just submitted some of my music to her catalog and then it got picked up by the Lizzo show so that was just kind of a, uh, you know that was just something that happened because uh right place right time right I mean, I think what my music stands for is very similar to music that Lizzo makes, very much about empowerment and just loving yourself and body positivity. So I feel like it was very perfect for the opportunity. People might not realize the process, but do you just walk around and song ideas, tunes, lines come into your head and 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 then you got to write them down like real quick so you don't forget them? <laughs> Actually, you know, usually that's not how it works for me, at least. For me, I usually, I have to have an instrumental first 
And once I find an instrumental that I really vibe with, I, I never write to acoustic songs. I always write to an instrumental. I don't know what it is. I'm just, I know other people do it differently. Maybe because I grew up with more computer music, you know, more produced music. I have to have an instrumental. Then I start coming up with melodies and I record them just like on voice notes on my phone just so I won't forget it. But I have to be sitting down to do this. Like it's not just randomly throughout the day. I have to be sitting yeah. down like I need to write a song. And I come up with the voice notes, the the melody ideas, and then I start writing lyrics to it. And then I usually record that as a demo on my phone. And then if I like it enough, I will go record it in a studio. Well, I have to say that song, Clown Face, Clown Tears. Is so catchy i mean oh, i can't you. get it out of my head it's like one of really? the, I appreciate yeah, right? that. it's like a lady gaga song it's like thank you i <laughs> i appreciate that that actually came about because i got really pissed off at um a boyfriend ex-boyfriend now but i was really mad because i just felt like he wasn't fully valuing me and just taking me for granted and it was just so toxic and I just got so mad one day and and I remember he used to always say get out of my face <laughs> like he would say that when he was writing songs and so I took that and I made it like one of the opening lines to to my song so that was what inspired clown tears and it was I had not really written one that was a little bit darker like that, but I think it just came about because I was so pissed off. And I love how you have the little snippets of it, like you were talking about earlier with content and just little drips and draps, you know, like putting little seeds out there with that song. So it does stick in people's. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I think that is how. That is from what I've experienced. And I feel like with Clown Tears, I am doing, and maybe this is just because it's my newest release and I understand more how TikTok works now. And I feel like I've been very much into kind of thinking how I can make content around the song and little snippets. Like, I think my newest one snippet I've been doing is like you think that you is all that but the truth is you suck and I've been making stupid little things around that but people have been liking that because it's like a good line and there's a lot of things you could write that are applicable to that and it's short and people's attention spans are really short so if you can do a mix of like longer content but then like shorter sound bites and then I even like sped up clown tears because sped up songs are doing well on TikTok and you know, made it sound more ravey. So there's a lot of stuff you, if you think about the content you can make around a song, like it's not even just the music video showing that. There's like so much content. There's like an endless amount of possibilities. And it's your song. So the recent uh, war with uh, Universal <laughs> Music doesn't apply because it doesn't. there's no copyright We're infringement. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a good thing. Although, you know, I always thought that Universal is a great label to be signed to. But I think right now, if you're an artist that was just recently signed to Universal, that sucks. I've seen artists on TikTok that just recently got signed, like be so pissed off that now all their music's off, you know, so yeah, it depends on where you were with Universal. But I mean, it kind of goes against marketing. I mean, Marketing 101. I mean, that's what I thought. I remember years ago, the Grateful Dead used to encourage people to record their, you know, songs or snippets of songs at their concerts and share it because mm -hmm. that's how they got their word out. <laughs> that's that's the mark. That's the marketing. Yeah. I mean, I, I so like Live Nation so at the concerts. They want to like no, no, no. They want to like not have the um, filming or even I've noticed on um on TikTok sometimes it will like 
even if it's not a universal song, sometimes it like removes the sound randomly. YouTube does that too, right? YouTube or they'll does flag that too you. with the yeah. co copy. And I think it's annoying too, because what if you're like actually the artist that's like yeah. posting that, you know? It's weird. They're like system, however they, their AI system of how they like flag thing. It's just weird. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, a hundred years ago, I, I was at a Judas Priest concert and then, there was a few bands before them and it was so amazing in between waiting for the next band to come on because they they would play DJ music, right? And they were playing yeah. Ozzy Osbourne and um, the entire crowd was singing the song at the top of their lungs. So I recorded it, like <laughs> I took yeah. a picture of I took a, back then you didn't have smartphones, but I had like taken a recording of it and then I threw it up on my YouTube, but it got flagged, right? So I still have it on YouTube, but I have it uh, private, um, but it, oh, was, it was flagged even though people were so ridiculous. It's so like, what are they? <laughs> so stupid. I know, but you know, but it's, it's really one of those things that well, in some respects, technology, like tick, what we just talked about and how to push out content, those are things that kind of move us forward in the marketing world. But then you've got these archaic <laughs> uh, rules and regulations sometimes. They are. I, I yeah, understand that kind them. Of, what? I understand some of the reasoning behind it. But I mean, I understand some of the reasoning, but then it just doesn't like always mesh well with the fact yeah. that we have all these like public domains to push the content onto. Like it isn't really, you know, back in the day, it was like you would just watch MTV and that's how you would see stuff. And like now that's not the case. So and yeah. you can usually do it on some platforms, like you can post that stuff on some platforms, but others, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, it's weird. Nope. Yeah. Nope, nope. <laughs> so you have also become the strong woman you needed when you were younger. And I want to know, what is it that people still get wrong about you? What is the thing that people think that you are, but you're not? That's a good question. I think that what people still get wrong about me and I've found this because I, before I even started releasing music, I kind of had a little bit of a social media persona, which was kind of like influenced by my time on the East Coast, hanging out with like Guidos and meatheads at the Jersey Shore. And so therefore, because of that, I kind of took the persona and kind of ran with it. And I was a little bit douchey. I would like call myself a douchebag guy. I mean, I would be hanging out like at the Jersey Shore, like fist pumping, like, you know, like popping bottles every weekend with like meatheads. And that was just part of the persona. And I had a lot of people like, I think it's funny because the people that took me more seriously, they were all the people like my peers they always and maybe this is like a similar theme mm -hmm. like sometimes I feel like I was born into wrong generation I should have been born like I'm like on the cusp of millennial and gen z but like I feel like I should have maybe been born into gen z because all of gen z that a lot of people that follow me on tiktok are gen z like teenagers or just younger than me even and they get that all my stuff's a joke when I'm being a person mm -hmm. like having my persona everyone like my peers they take it so seriously and they think it's like real like they think it's real and they'll be like that girl's crazy or they used to just be like that girl's such a douchebag and I swear it's that's what people like my peers and it's been obviously like, ever since back then because yeah I was bullied too and I just feel like they don't get it and maybe it's because gen a lot of gen z like they all created online personas too, right? Because they grew up more with the internet even than maybe me. And so they get it. I feel like a lot of people like millennials, older millennials, they don't get it. It's it's like nobody ever watched a wrestling match. 
that's what I'm saying I'm like <laughs> do you guys not realize it's for like or watch the movie like or watch the movie and they <laughs> literally think that I'm like literally that douchey and it was even more so when I was like really playing up the Jersey Shore thing like when I still had my black hair before I went blonde like when I was like only dating like meatheads like then they really took it seriously and they still do. I noticed just a disconnect. So I think that's what people still get wrong. I'm like, you really think this is real? It's just to be funny. Oh, well, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it is. And we're seeing it, not just <laughs> things like that. It's like everywhere you go, everywhere you go. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody thinks you are that character. You're you that are. character. And it's so weird. It's like, yeah, you've never, exactly. You've never seen a movie before. Like everyone's acting. Like yeah. even just everyone in general, you don't act the same as you would at a family gathering as you would at like a club. Yeah, exactly. So I want to know how that Reach uh, National Influencer event was that you went to re recently because you posted some pictures on TikTok from that. So that was- I did, yeah. Thank you for asking. It was really fun. I got the invite like the night before and it was like, it was so random that I got it because I was like, what is this reach association? <laughs> Must have done, been something that I'd done some like work with before. And it looked then pretty swanky. It was really fun. It was nice. It was in LA like, at a lounge and there are little like gift bags and there's you know photo and interviews and and good food open bar and it was just so funny because when I was there I a lot of the people there I guess they were mostly affiliated with UCLA and USC because reach is actually a social media organization like affiliated with those colleges and so I didn't really know that. And I was like wondering why I even got like invited because it was all like, like 19 to 22 year old oh. <laughs> influencers, like TikTokers. Yeah. I mean, I'm not that TikTokers much. TikTokers are all but, age though. <laughs> that's, but it was all that age, which I'm yeah. older than that. I'm, you know, not that much, but older than that. Yeah. So everyone was like asking me how how I like UCLA and I'm like, yeah, I don't <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun. Yeah, it was really fun. And that's that's a lot of the people that follow me on TikTok are like that age anyway. So Yeah, and digital media is there's no secret sauce to it, is there? You can be on every platform, but really to be successful on a platform or pick a couple platforms that really speak to you and then you know, but consistency and determination yeah. of, and then playing and finding that right cocktail of what to post. Because like you say, you know, sometimes you post, you got, oh, that one got like a thousand views, but that one's got like 12. <laughs> and that's and the one really, you thought would be that's really the one good. you thought would pop off and that's the one you put more effort into. You know, I've yeah. noticed nowadays too, TikTok is giving a lot more weight to like photo posts, which are really low hanging fruit. If you yeah, think I notice. they're really low hanging, like it's so easy, right? Some, I don't know, what did I do this? But then morning? you get, you get muted because if you put a song to it. If you put a song that, you know, you shouldn't put, but this morning I made one because I'm like, this is just now that I know that it's doing so well. I will do photo posts every day for like at least one of my posts, right? Yeah. So, and I think I just like took a picture of Katy Perry and Riff Raff from the VMAs in 2014 <laughs> or something. And I'm like, what did pop music sound like in the 2010s with, you know, just my little caption and on the next photo you scroll to, it's a picture of me and Riff Raff from like two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, and then I put the lyrics to one of my songs that sounds has a 2010s pop vibe. So it's, yeah. it's you know, very good, very good. Yeah. It's uh, interesting how you think, oh, this one's going to kill, right? And, and then it doesn't go anywhere or 
and it's and it's usually the the one that you put so much effort into and you're being like all strategic and it like and doesn't you, and you think do you keep it there or do you delete it right because you if think it doesn't if it's not do low good. impact low engagement so low it might impact your algorithm yeah if, no you're right about that and if there's something i make that's like way too low i will delete it yeah i'm doing that now too i've done that on youtube as well um, yeah i mean I, yeah youtube like on shorts also yeah. i don't know if you post do you post i do a lot of shorts i just posted another one today and and but it's, a lot of times it's the tiktok because the shorts are so much easier to make in tiktok you know because it stops you at a minute yeah it stops. and it seems to be the best platform to make them short and then sometimes the short will be you know, almost like really well received on TikTok, and then you get like <laughs> not a whole lot it's on weird YouTube. How that and then other times it's vice versa, right? <laughs> the different platforms, like yeah, you'll post something that did really well on TikTok on the shorts, and then it gets like zero views or like one view, and yeah. then and then vice versa, it'll have zero views on TikTok, and then have like holy crap, <laughs> strange. And then I feel like that too. I mean, there's really no rhyme and reason no. around the algorithm. It's so random. And you even play. talking about posting times, I don't even agree with that. No, I don't how can it be? We all live in different countries. We all live in different places. So exactly. So <laughs> you know how there will be like some gurus like on TikTok talking about how to get more engagement or yeah. and then posting time. That's BS. Yeah, it is BS. Yeah. Because I mean, the people in like, Indian if you're from India or some countries over uh, overseas they get tons of engagement I mean if mm -hmm. you want to see engagement just go to a TikTok or go to a YouTube Japanese music channel and see the Crazy. views on that Holy. you know what's and on that note what's really good is if and I do this with some of my posts too. I will like promote some of my posts that I think are worth promoting. And I will choose to, yeah, right. I mean, that's the way you have to do it. And that's- right. Yeah, and if it's, it's like, got low engagement particularly. If got low, or you, you think bump it. that you want their reach to be higher and because it deserves to be higher. I mean, it's not unlike what any record label does. You don't think like a record label is pumping like tons of money and running ads yeah. for an artist. Of course, that's what they're doing. Yeah. And so why wouldn't an individual or like, you know, like whatever business want to run ads on their posts? So I have noticed because the engagement's so high with some of those other countries, I'll just set my targeting if I'm running ads to like some of those other countries and not even mm -hmm. the U.S., so what do you love about what you do? What do I love? I love, I love the ability that I can just be super creative and there's no limitations to my creativity. Like every day I can just wear what I want. That's a big thing. Cause I'm like really into fashion. So I, I remember when I did work like a nine to five for a minute before getting fired, like right before I started this, I was just like, I, I would come to my nine to five just wearing like really glam, like stuff like Versace scarves and just fur and people would just be looking at me like whatever, like just who the fuck do you think you are? And now that's, what I can wear all the time, you know, and I love that. I love the ability that I can just like be creative and express myself the way that I want in so many avenues, be it fashion, be it content creation, being music, and there's just no rules. And I like that. Yeah, we can do whatever we want. When we... That's good. <laughs> that's, we want. A, that's a great thing. That's bet to me, that's better. Is you just signed a publishing deal, and mm. so does that mean there's an album on the horizon? Yes, right on. There, there is an album. I actually finished it, and it is going to. I just finished it like oh, two weeks ago, and it has a bunch of new songs on it, and two feature, two collabs. I'm really excited about with um two rappers that I grew up listening to. 
So really happy about that. That's my first album, my first full length project. I'm really stoked about it and I'm uh, really proud of it. And it has really no slow songs. It's all like upbeat, total, very summer vibes, pretty hip hop influenced, I would say. And just uh, really good, like turn up songs. Right on. So, well, clearly your songs have uh, had this this it factor to it because they've already gotten a lot of traction. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, I appreciate that. I think with this newest release, I have a song on it that is my, it's so good. I've actually performed it already, like at performances and people are obsessed with it. And oh, it's good. my favorite song I've ever written not really going to say what it's called, no. but it's you really <laughs> people, someone DM'd me because I performed it last week and they're like, where is the song? We were looking for it on Spotify, but it's not there. I'm like, it's not even out yet, but it's, it's so good. And well, that's um, cool that you got to test it out to see the reality. Well, that's the, yeah, I've been like holding on to it and because I'm putting it out on the, the album and I have a, a release I'm not really going to talk about how, like what I'm doing to promote it or who I'm promoting yeah. it with, but it's, it should be really big for me, which is why I'm not going to be talking about it right now, but I'm really excited for that. And I think this album is really going to even um, hopefully, and I think it is, especially with my new music publishing deal and what I think it's really going to get even more traction than what I put out before. Or maybe some of the old stuff will get even more traction, honestly, yeah. because I, I do, I can say that my song Confident, um, a radio version of it is on the song, is on the album, as well as Versace Shade. Um, so there are some of my old songs, but there's a lot of new songs on there. Cool. Last questions. Yeah. Some people have musical associations about certain points of their life. What song describes where you are now a song by like anyone anyone um that's a good question I mean I've been listening to a lot of Lil Uzi Future some Lana Del Rey maybe I'll have to pick Radio by Lana Del Rey okay um because it's just kind of about how she's kind of happy at this point in her life my life is sweet like cinnamon like a fucking dream I'm living in um baby love me because I'm playing on the radio so it's just kind of feeling content yeah. and just feeling happy with your career and I'm just you know I'm happy and I I'm excited to see where it goes you know I'm excited to see where because everything I've been like working really hard and with this next project that I'm releasing I'm excited to see the reach that it will have. And so maybe that's the song that kind of yeah. it was. Sounds sounds great to me. And I, I'm looking forward to uh, hearing that album when it comes out. Thank you. Thank you so much <laughs> for being on my show. Oh, thank you for having me. I really enjoyed you did like a lot of good research Aww. because I'm telling you, I don't even remember. Like I did, I was like, did radio dabbled for a minute. It wasn't my favorite thing, but the fact that you were able to recall that, <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Yeah, well, I am to please. You're good. No, you're a good you. researcher. You're very Thank good. You. Thank you. Well, thanks so much. And I'm looking forward to seeing seeing you soar. Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. Greatly. This is Debbie Ellickson. Thank you to my guest and to you, the viewer, for watching this episode of Locker Room for Growth. Please subscribe to this channel and check out our past shows and clips in the YouTube playlist. The show broadcasts from Treaty 7 on Turtle Island, the traditional territory of the Blackfoot people, which includes Siksida, Blood, Pikani, Sutina, Stony Nakoda Nations, and Métis Nation Region 3. Again, thank you for watching and please subscribe.